subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon, to never miss a video from us. Hi, welcome to this introductory course on Microsoft AZ-104 certification. The Microsoft AZ-104 certification, previously known as AZ-103, is for the candidates, who wants to become an Azure Administrator. Candidates for this exam, are Azure Administrators, who implements, manages, and monitors, identity, governance, storage, and virtual networks in a cloud environment. The Azure Administrator will provision, size, monitor, and adjust resources as appropriate. Candidates should have a minimum of six months of hands-on experience administering Azure. Candidates should have a strong understanding of core Azure services, Azure workloads, security, and governance. Candidates for this exam should have experience in using PowerShell, the command line interface, Azure portal, and ARM templates. The outline of the exam and skills measured are as follows. The exam measures your ability to accomplish the following technical tasks. Manage Azure identities and governance, implement and manage storage, deploy and manage Azure compute resources, configure and manage virtual networking, and monitor and backup Azure resources. Cloud computing provides, configurable computing resources, and services that can be quickly provisioned with minimal management effort. There are Azure services for almost any business computing need. Do you need an interactive website? A backend for a mobile app? Secure storage for your client data? All of these, and more are available. And these resources, are available when you need them, and, you're typically only charged, for the amount you use. Azure provides several configurations, allowing you to blend or transition between, on-premises, and a solution hosted completely in the cloud. Cloud computing is the provisioning of services, and applications on demand, over the internet. Servers, applications, data, and other resources are provided as a service. You can quickly provision computing resources, and use the service with minimal management. You shouldn't think of cloud computing as a data center available through the internet. Cloud computing uses virtualization, commodity hardware, and automated processes, to provide a self-service user experience to customers. There are three deployment models for cloud computing. Public cloud, private cloud, and hybrid cloud. Public clouds are the most common way of deploying cloud computing. Services are offered over the public internet, and are available to anyone, who wants to purchase them. The cloud resources, such as, servers and storage, are owned and operated by a third-party cloud service provider, and delivered over the internet. Services may be free, or sold on demand, allowing customers to pay only pre-usage, for the CPU cycles, storage, or bandwidth they consume. Microsoft Azure is an example of a public cloud. Examples of why you would use public cloud. 1. The on-demand, or subscription model, allows you to pay for the portion of CPU, storage, and other resources that you use, or reserve. 2. No requirement to purchase, manage, and maintain on-premises hardware, and application infrastructure. The cloud service provider is held responsible for all management, and maintenance of the system. 3. Quickly provision infrastructure resources using a web portal, scripts, or via automation. 4. Store data near your users, or in desired locations, without having to maintain your own data centers. 5. The service provider is responsible for hardware maintenance. A private cloud consists of computing resources, used exclusively by users from one business, or organization. It can be physically located at your organization's on-site data center, or, it can be hosted by a third-party service provider. The term private cloud, should not be considered a rebranding of, traditional on-premises data centers. A private cloud uses, on-premises infrastructure and services, to provide similar benefits of the public cloud. It uses an abstraction platform, to provide cloud-like services, such as, Kubernetes clusters, or a complete cloud environment like, Azure Stack. The organization is responsible for the purchase, configuration, and maintenance of the hardware. Communication between the systems, is usually on the network infrastructure that the business owns, and maintains. For example, a private internal network, or a dedicated fiber optic connection between buildings. Examples of why you would use private cloud. 1. An existing operating environment that can't be replicated in the public cloud. A large organization may choose to commoditize their computing resources. 2. Business critical legacy applications that can't easily be physically relocated. 3. Data sovereignty and security. A hybrid cloud is a computing environment, 
that combines a public cloud and a private cloud by allowing data and applications to be shared between them. When computing and processing demand fluctuates, hybrid cloud computing gives businesses the ability to seamlessly scale their on-premises infrastructure up to the public cloud to handle any overflow without giving third-party data centers access to the entirety of their data. Organizations gain the flexibility and computing power of the public cloud for basic and non-sensitive computing tasks while keeping business critical applications and on-premises data safely behind a company firewall. Examples of why you would use hybrid cloud. 1. Business reasons required to use an existing operating environment and hardware. 2. Regulation requires that the data needs to remain at a physical location. 3. Public cloud can't replicate a legacy operating environment. 4. Moving workloads to the cloud over time. Cloud computing resources are delivered using three different service models. Infrastructure as a service, platform as a service and software as a service. The infrastructure as a service provider will supply this range of services to you as a service. So, you do not have to go ahead and create that infrastructure on your premise. Infrastructure as a service is the most basic category of cloud computing services. With infrastructure as a service, you rent the infrastructure servers, virtual machines, storage networks, and operating systems. The user is responsible for installation, configuration, and management of the software inside that operating system. But the cloud provider is responsible for ensuring that the underlying cloud infrastructures, virtual machine, storage, and networking is always available for the user. Platform as a Service Platform as a Service provides an environment for building, testing, and deploying software applications. Let's understand this. Developers are responsible for building great applications that we have today. They are very good at writing great code and making sure that the application works and performs at its best. But one of the major roadblocks that developers have is they do not have an understanding of the underlying infrastructure where the application will be hosted. For example, the developer may not know what encryption is and what backups are. The platform as a service provides an environment for building such applications so that the developer does not have to worry about those concepts and can focus on writing the best code. For example, when deploying a web application using platform as a service, you do not have to install an operating system. You do not have to even take care of the Windows updates or install the antivirus on the machine. Platform as a service is a complete development and deployment environment in the cloud. The cloud user, or the developer, is responsible for the development of their own applications. However, they are not responsible for managing the server or the underlying infrastructure. The cloud provider is then responsible for operating system management and network and service configuration. Software as a service is a method of software delivery that allows data to be accessed from any device with an internet connection and a web browser. In this SaaS-based model, software vendors host and maintain the seller's database and the code that constitute the application. First the companies do not have to invest in extensive hardware to host the software. And this in turn allows buyers to outsource most of the idea responsibilities. A major benefit of SAS is being able to spread out costs over time. Some of the examples that you can talk about is Office 365, which is a cloud-based email delivery model from Microsoft. The other examples are Salesforce, Facebook, and Gmail, because you do not have to install anything, all you need is a browser, and a login with the user and password given by the cloud SaaS provider. The Azure portal is great for performing single tasks and to see a quick overview of the state of your resources, but for tasks that need to be repeated daily or even hourly using the command line and a set of tested commands or scripts can help get your work done more quickly and avoid errors. The Azure CLI is a command line program to connect to Azure and execute administrative commands on Azure resources. It runs on Linux, Mac OS and Windows and allows administrators and developers to execute their commands through a terminal or command line prompt instead of a web browser. For example, to restart a virtual machine, you would use a command like the following. The Azure CLI provides cross-platform command line tools for managing Azure resources and can be installed locally on Linux, Mac, or Windows computers. 
the Azure CLI can also be used from a browser through the Azure Cloud Shell. In both cases, it can be used interactively or scripted. You can install Azure CLI from the link given in the description. The Azure CLI lets you control nearly every aspect of every Azure resource. You can work with resource groups, storage, virtual machines, Azure Active Directory, Azure AD, containers, machine learning, and so on. Commands in the CLI are structured in groups and subgroups. Each group represents a service provided by Azure, and the subgroups divide commands for these services into logical groupings. For example, the storage group contains subgroups including account, blob, storage, and queue. So, how do you find the particular commands you need? One way is to use AZ Find. Example, find the most popular commands related to the word blob. Example, show me the most popular commands for an Azure CLI command group, such as AZVM. If you already know the name of the command you want, the help argument for that command will get you more detailed information on the command, and for a command group, a list of the available subcommands. So, with our storage example, here's how you can get a list of the subgroups and commands for managing blob storage. For more such videos, subscribe to our channel.